first of all, good morning to everybody. Of course, we just had a historic week in St. Lucia, and like we've ever seen before. Um, first of all, as Minister for Youth Development and Sports and Parliamentary Rep for Grusely, I want to issue a formal apology for my pronouncement in my introduction to Julian Alfred at the Cicero um, Primary School. I think we all have had brief moments of lapses, and in my three years in politics, I think this was the first. As a human being, I do not expect that it will be my last. Um, a moment of just, you know, levity and fun and just excitement of a long week of Julian Alfred celebration. And so I, I really chose the wrong time and place to have said what I said. And I just want to apologize to everybody, every single St. Lucian or anybody that was offended by what I said. But I don't think that should drown out what the day meant for Julian Alfred and St. Lucia and what the week meant for everybody. Um, as I said, human beings make mistakes. I think you have to own your mistakes as a human being, and I have no problem doing that. So apologies again. That being said, I think we had an awesome week in celebrating Julian Alfred and our other Olympians. I think many were surprised that the other Olympians did receive or will be recipients of financial awards from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports in collaboration with the National Lotteries Authority. Um, uh, Coach Kenvin McPhee and the three other Olympians deserve some recognition for their time in Paris, a historic time. I want to let everybody know that um, this really was a one-off event and we expect that a sports policy would guide every single thing that we do as it pertains to rewarding administrators, associations, and athletes going forward. Um, okay, a little bit on your constituency works because we know the, the waterfront project mm -hmm. is ongoing and there's a second phase coming on. So yes. Waterfront project as well as the stadium project for all these things. Okay. So we had some um, developments in Groselé, of course. The Groselé Recreational Facility, it was 98% complete until we had the um, hurricane that really set us back. Um, I've been in collaboration with the, in contact with the Ministry of Tourism, who is pretty much the funding agency and the lead agency for that tourism enhancement project. And uh, the contractor is just waiting for a final issuance of an extended contract to complete the works at the recreational facility. I will say I'm disappointed that persons and vandals use the opportunity to um, to vandalize some of the, the facility that was already constructed, including AC units. Um, but we are going to continue and we are expecting that very soon we'll be completing the recreational part of the, the project. In terms of the, the waterfront on Bay Street, we do have a plan on the table for developing that area, uh, the sea view area, from the sea view area all the way down to um, the recreational facility to actually attract more tourists in a more sustained way, in a different and a more enhanced way um, to Grosley Friday night and to some other activities along the shores. Um, we're certainly hoping that we get all the approval that we need and that we can commence that very, very soon. In terms of the Grosley playing field, Again, this is a project that is about 80% complete. Uh, we have the bleachers and the stands um, being worked on right now, and we're expecting the roofing to come in at some point at the end or towards the middle of October uh, so that we can finally have the covering, and we're certainly hoping to host events at the Grizzly Mini Stadium. An announcement will be made on the naming of that stadium and to some of the other facilities that we will be having for our young athletes at the Grizzly Mini Stadium. So. We're very content with that. I spoke at my AGM last night. Um, there is a absolute glut for roads in in Grosley. We have over 100 roads that I said that we've measured and costed, and uh, we're just waiting on the financing to to really commence a comprehensive road network program in the constituency of Grosley. I get calls from Corin, from Piat, from Degaso, Monchi, Labon. Cap Estate especially, and some of the surrounding environments, including Beau that we've done so much work, um, that we've completed so many roads so far, still there is a need for, for roads to be constructed. Even Hidden Valley Estate in Lafayette, Caimagé, and some of these other areas in Rivière Mita require the attention. But we do have ongoing the Deramo Road, the Deramo 2 Lafayette Kaimaji Road, and uh, so we're certainly expecting that we can continue to um, develop our infrastructure in the constituency of Grosley. Yeah, um, one, one, uh, one area that, um, oh, For a second. Sure. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Okay. No, 
Absolutely. Absolutely. I was always concerned that we did not have the area fortified enough. Um, the contractor did make recommendation to ensure that it is. Um, that is part of the next phase of what we're going to be doing at the recreational facility. But for the entire Grosley waterfront along Bay Street into Pigeon Point, we definitely need wave breakers, as many as we could find um, to ensure that you know the water, as it continues to rise due to global warming, does not allow for waves to come into the community. But the fact of the matter remains that we are living in a, a global climate that is continuing to um, show the remnants. And so we know that freak events can actually happen. And no matter how many wave breakers you put along the water shores, if you have a hurricane, a hurricane coming in, um, there's really not much you can do. But I think wave breakers are needed along the, the Grosley, the Bay Street. And uh, it's certainly something that we're looking into. Yeah, well, the Grosley Police Station is 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 continuing in earnest. Um, no pun intended to the Deputy Prime Minister, but I am indeed very very satisfied with the pace at which. The Grizzly Police Station is being constructed. Um, from all indications, uh, the, this is happening very, very well and on time. Uh, I look forward to moving the policemen from uh, the Grizzly Human Resource Development Center and, of course, the, 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 the other areas that they are stationed right now. Um, I think we know the history of policing in Grizzly. I think we know that we spent, we had six years of a government that did nothing about constructing a, a, a divisional headquarter in Grosley, despite the fact that it was on the table from the moment they walked in. And I just think for Grosley, the growing constituency that it is, that it will be a really good historic day when we finally get our divisional headquarters. And I'm expecting that very soon, well, as soon as it's constructed, we can have a very nice ceremony and cut the ribbons. Well, I certainly condemn any acts of violence um, as a Minister of Youth anywhere, anywhere in St. Lucia, certainly condemn any acts of violence. And of course, when it happens in my constituency, it, it becomes personal to me. Um, we certainly, I do not have the details as to what led to that act of violence in the constituency, but I certainly hope that the police can continue to do what they need to do to find whoever is responsible and let justice take, take its course. But as a Minister of Youth Development and Sport, I continue to appeal to all facets of our society to do their part in the fight against crime, and we certainly hope that we can have a better way of, of you know, dealing with conflict and ensuring that our young people get a better way of um, moving forward. What's your, what's your um, it's Friday night? Well, it was an actual, it was an amazing event. I believe that um, it was very well run, very well put together, and I think solutions came out. I think we had people who came out for the motorcade, people who came out for the, the school events, people who came out uh, for the monument, and we had a, a crowd a massive crowd at Darren Sami in celebration, and I think people were anxious to hear what we would be doing for um, Julian Alfred especially, and I think we collaborated well as a cabinet of ministers. Um, the Prime Minister was the Minister of Finance and the, um, the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, along with the team, the organizing committee for her return. I think, I think from all indications, we did a pretty good job. I think for me, the barometer would have always been what Julian Alfred thought, how she felt about how she was welcomed. And of course, uh, I, in my brief moments, 
of conversation with her, one of the questions I asked her was, uh, I remember asking her about the motorcade. What were your thoughts on the motorcade? And I asked her to actually give me, on a scale of 1 to 10, uh, what did you think about the motorcade? And she gave it a perfect 10. And for me, that was enough for me to sleep very, very well that night and carry on doing the business of showing her the appreciation. So I think I've not had a conversation with her since because of course everybody was hogging and pulling her in all different directions. But I think by and large, we did a very good job in hosting Julian Alfred and we certainly hope that the next generation of athletes are encouraged to do their best to get to where she is right now. Can you just clarify for me, um, coach, this uh, former coach, I'm fascinated. There's talk that the government is building a house or building a Can you just clarify that? There's a reason why I said it was a personal, a personal donation. This is because um, whatever we are going to be doing for Cuthbert Modest is something we are going to do in collaboration with him, in conversation with him, given his leaving, um, his current leaving experience, his current leaving situation, and it's something that at the end of the day, when we are completed, we expect him to be very, very satisfied and happy, living in a space that belongs to him and not necessarily a bank. It's a good time for every single stakeholder in St. Lucia to play their part. I think at my speech on Friday, I indicated that, uh, I mean, it's clear that uh, easily $300,000 could be raised for an athlete as we saw corporate St. Lucia coming out and pretty much donating to Julian Alfred. I'm just wondering why this cannot happen before the person gets to be in Julian Alfred why this has not happened at the primary school level. We have uh, inter-primary school competition every year, and we look, and every year the ministry has to find $200,000 to host an inter-primary school event, and we barely get any assistance in terms of monetary support from Corporate St. Lucia. And so I'm appealing once again from, to Corporate St. Lucia to do it now. This is the opportune time for, for them to really show that they're serious about sports development, youth development, and identifying the next Julian Alfred. It's it's the same with the youth councils. The youth councils have their roles on the ground in the communities to really develop and put young people in meaningful programs, including sports programs, including financial development programs, including mental programs, including drug-free programs. These were all programs that I was a part of when I was young and in a, a, um, a community organization. So we're certainly hoping that all stakeholders, including the government and this thing about the government and we need to do and they need to do and they need to do, I think right now the conversation has to be what can I do? Even in this room, every single journalist, there is a role for you. Asking the questions, being there to cover, doing the different um, profiles on young athletes, everybody has a role to play in identifying the next Julian Alfred. Well, well, he's not he's not officially reached out to me as minister, so I'm, I, I, it's very difficult to to sift through through social media to find out exactly what the truth is. I just know he's been in training programs. He's been part of our high performance center, uh, which is a program that the ministry, along with the National Lotteries Authority, put together for elite cricketers, cricketers that we expect to break into the West Indies team and to franchise cricket. And we've provided support to um, Kimani and the other um, burgeoning cricketers uh, from that level. I was told that he, he sought some financing to attend uh, a cricket a cricket competition, a cricket camp, and uh, he was given that support, whether it was done um, on time or for a different time, 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 time space. I am not sure at this moment, but we have been providing support to Kimani Melius through our High Performance Center uh, uh, for a number of months now. Um, that support is how much is this 
Well, each, each individual, apart from getting the psychological support, the physiotherapy, they are getting $1,500 monthly um, just to be part of the, the training program. Some of them are employed and uh, we still provide them with that level of support every month. But you're still going to tell me about what's being said on social media. Mm -hmm. Are you waiting for him to contact um, Well, my ministry would be in contact with him very, very often, considering that he is part of the program. And not just my ministry. We have a coaching program. The coach at the High Performance Center is also part of the ministry. Alton Crafton works and is contracted with the Ministry of Youth Development and Sport. So uh, when individuals indicate that there is no contact with Kimani Melius to the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, it's almost impossible considering his main coach, the person that he relies on for most of his support, is contracted to give that support from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. So whatever is said on social media, I mean, it's very difficult to, to piece through what is being said, what is reality and what, what's fake, especially when the individual has not reached out to you specifically, but we do have a director, we do have a PS, we do have a deputy PS, we have coaches that are very well connected with Kimani Melius and providing that support. So you are reaching out to them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next year, September 27, 2025, what happens? What can I say, who should expect? September 27th? Julian Alfred Day. Oh. <laughs> I thought you would have asked about August 3rd, um, but um, what, what I did say was that we are hoping that once we complete the stadium, the George Orlam Stadium, and we have athletics back at that stadium, that yearly we want to put on the Julian Alfred Invitational, um, where, of course, in collaboration with the Ministry of Tourism, uh, we can really have some of the best athletes in the region, in the world, um, pretty much in competition right here in St. Lucia. Um, apart from this, as a ministry, um, around August 3rd, 2nd, 4th, around that time where she won gold and silver, we do want to have yearly activities in athletics that really um, speaks to what she achieved um, in terms of competition. And we're hoping that the entire sports fraternity could join in in that celebration. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Right. Cool. Thank you all. All right, we'll move straight into it. Are you ready? Okay, so yes. All right. All right, so yes, now we will um, prepare any statements or you just, all right? Okay. Okay, so we'll uh, now invite to the podium the Deputy Prime Minister or Acting Prime Minister, Honorable Dr. Ernest Hillier, to take some of your questions. Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, well, it's start of another week, um, the end of a hugely successful week uh, with the homecoming of Julian Alfred. And I think on behalf of the government and people of St. Lucia, I really want to thank everyone who made this the tremendous success that it was the Minister of Youth and Sports who co-chaired the committee, the planning committee, the PS Youth and Sports for outstanding leadership. Um, all the agencies that were involved, Slasper Events Company, SLTA, SLHTA, the police, and we must mention the police, I've done so publicly before, but the police did a phenomenal job. I mean, it was not the only event taking place. There's netball, there's diplomatic visits and the police really came up in a very big way um, and I personally saw um, the work that they were doing and I informed the commissioner that I would personally as Minister of Tourism write him to commend the officers I saw working um, during that visit because you know we criticize them when they fall short but when they are exceptional we really need to say so so I, I really want to recognize the police as well as other allied services the um, fire service and everyone that just came out and, and support um, I, I can tell you I cannot recall any other time in the history of St. Lucia where we had such an outpouring of national support and national unity and patriotism and just a, a feeling of you know 
sense of achievement and identity as solutions as we did last week. And in some ways, it's a statement to us as a people, as a country, that we can work together, we can make things happen if we probably look beyond our differences. And certainly for one week, Julian gave us the opportunity for us to forget about some of our differences and to just focus on her achievement. And it was a rallying call for all of us. And I, I hope that spirit will continue and, and solutions will see the possibilities um, that can come out of our togetherness and our commonality when we, we, we work with a shared purpose. And of course, not that we'll not have differences, but we shouldn't allow differences um, to pull down um, the, the, the common purpose that we, we need to have. So last week was a very special feeling. Um, certainly, as a parliamentary representative of Castro South, where Cicero is, it was an extra special feeling for me, especially on Thursday when she visited her alma mater, the Cicero RC Combined School, and the unveiling of the, the mural in, in her honor, and as well as her own contribution to get a Puma um, to the students of the school. And the announcement by Puma that next school year, all the children at the school will receive Puma shoes um, was a real special touch on that day. It was a very emotional day, as you can imagine, for herself and her family and the teachers and everybody else. Um, and it, it really made us feel good as a country. And we announced last week, firstly, the signing of Julian as a tourism ambassador, which is big news for us in St. Lucia. We couldn't ask for a better face. We couldn't ask for a better you know, representation of the excellence of St. Lucia than in Julian Alfred. So I'm excited about it. The program with us starts in November. Um, the first week of November, we will have a special program in London and more details will be presented. So um, it, it was special. And once again, let me just thank everyone that contributed to making it the success it was. We were magnificent as a country. I mean, the whole world says it. It doesn't mean that there were not little shortcomings in organization, places we could be even better. But you should never allow those shortcomings to pull down just how um, spectacular it was last week. Um, so, and again, the good news continues. Our, we will officially release our tourism arrival numbers for August. Um, on Wednesday, and it's again a, a very you know exciting story that you know August was I think our largest August on record, 18% um, higher than August last year, and year to date we 3% ahead of 2019, which was the best year for St Lucia. And when you consider the number of hotels that are closed or been refurbished now, so we have a lot less rooms than we had in 2019, but our numbers are certainly above 2019. So the arrivals, the stayover arrivals continue to increase. Um, we are getting ready for the start of the cruise season in the next couple of weeks. The cruise ships will start back coming um, and of course will peak you know, in January, February next year. And we're expecting um, this year to be even better than last year, um, which is, is very good news. So we've already started the preparations for the cruise season. And we, like I said, expecting um, you know, an even better season this year. Um, the, the numbers for the final quarter, October, November, December, and first quarter, 25, January, February, March, looks very good. And if nothing untold happens, we expect our numbers to continue to grow. Um, Secrets Morgan Bay, Secrets and Lucia, formerly um, the Morgan Bay Resort, um, will be reopening shortly. So that would add back, uh, you know, 350 rooms. And we're really excited about what will be on offer, you know, at that property. And of course, work is continuing on some of the other developments around their country. Um, the GPA project will move into the next phase. They finish all the drawings, um, submitted to, um, to DCA for approvals, and we'll see quite a lot starting to happen as it relates to the GPH and the cruise services, the redevelopment in St. Lucia. So, you know, Julian comes at a, a very um, opportune time for us at a time when we're about to expand in terms of our tourism product, our tourism offerings, um, having her as a tourism ambassador is going to be of tremendous significance to us. Yes, sir. Um, 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 the, um, the 
how would that reflect on uh, you know uh, uh, our bringing the community? You know, we have this research people who want to come and see where she's from. You know, her background. How would that reflect now? It's your constituency, like in terms of you know the aging, the, the social conditions of you know of within that community, because pretty soon. But it's, it's a discussion I've not even really been anxious to take part in. I've listened to a lot of, you know, stories being told, perspectives being expressed by persons who believe that we should fix up all the roads in, in Monkey Tong, which I wish I could do. I wish I could start next week fixing up every road in Monkey Tong and fixing up every house as well, you know, and, 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 and you know, making sure everybody has internet and people have televisions and, and, and everything. And people keep saying, you know, how could you leave Monkey Tong in its state? So, of course, I would be the happiest person alive if we can repair every single road, repair every house, and make the place look like a, a real spruce up, you know, middle class housing area. I would love that. But reality strikes. You know, it's not going to happen. But the government has the repair of the roads on its program. Uh, and we are going to repair um, the roads in that area. Um, and we'll do whatever we can. I mean, we're already helping quite a few persons with housing repairs in the community in any case before Julian won the gold medal, and we'll continue to do so. Um, but we, of course, we would welcome researchers to come in and to see the real story where she came from. Uh, and like I said at the unveiling of the mural, you know, she's a statement of possibility. You know, you came from a deep, an area of deprivation, deprivation in many aspects, including deprivation of sporting facilities and sporting programs to add to the other social deprivation. That is the reality. That's what she came from. And any story that will be told about her rise to global stardom will have to reflect on the fact that she came from a, a disadvantaged community. And what is painful about it? And, and I, as I say, sometimes I, I want to avoid those conversations, you know, because some conversations are not honest conversations in a way. And I'm a person I like to speak my mind, and sometimes when I say what I think, um, some people don't like it. Just remember, persons who move from Conway and move to that area, nothing was put in place there for them. Nothing. The concrete roads in, in some parts of that community were built by Robert Lewis when he was in government between 2011 and 2016 more than 20-something years after they had been moved by the United Workers' Party government. Think about that. Those persons were virtually taken and just placed there. No roads built, no infrastructure built, no um, community facilities put in. And Robert Lewis, when the Labour Party was in government 2011, 2016, started moving from the dirt roads and putting concrete roads. And it's a, a journey I have to continue now to complete the whole network of proper roads, make sure people have water, make sure people have electricity, make sure, and, and that continues. So when people now all of a sudden saying, but you're not fixing up the road, and then people have this, they have that, there's a history behind that community, you know. There's a history, it's not a very good history of people being treated properly by um, the state. But I mean, we will make the improvements, we will continue um, to, to, to contribute as much as we can, and to make sure we improve the conditions of living of St. Lucians. I mean, this Labour Party is about putting people first. We cannot do everything one time for everyone, but we will continue and we will remain focused on improving the conditions in which um, persons live. In terms of the monument, uh, has an artist been selected? Is there a vision? No. Um, quite interestingly, um, one artist submitted a proposal for consideration, a very exciting one. And when the Prime Minister comes back, we will discuss on the process forward. Will we invite persons to submit designs and costings, whatnot? Um, but I have received one proposal so far. And it's quite exciting, I must tell you. Is there an update on the underwater sculpture? Yes, yes, yes. Every time you mention that, I get excited about it. Yeah. Um, the, feasibility study and the technical consultancy 
will start next week. Next week. So um, there is a specialist firm um, that did the one in St. Martin. And if you Google St. Martin Sculpture Park, you will see the, the newest one in the Caribbean, a really exciting one in St. Martin. And I think they also did something in Bahamas um, and in Australia recently. So they will be coming here and starting to do the technical assessment in terms of where the sites are best suited and as well as feasibility study in terms of how we can design it to make sure that it is a you know, profit-making enterprise. So we're really excited. We've had the storyboard competition. Um, there's been an assessment by the judges. I think they have made a decision and the ministry either sh would have received it last week or this coming week in terms of the winners of the storyboard competition. I was privileged to see some of the submissions and it was, I think we had almost 30 something submissions. So it was quite, you know, um, subscribed and I'm certainly looking forward to it. I, I mean, to be honest with you, I'm, you know, I'm not just excited, I'm uber excited about, you know, um, just what it is we can produce. And I think it will also represent um, the best of St. Lucia. What about using some of these submissions for something else? If it doesn't go for the underwater sculpture park, maybe something online? No, uh, no, it's a very good point you raise. In fact, one of the sculptures I'll probably mention is named Jalim um, said to me, you know, he also has a proposal for online sculpture park that he's been promoting. Um, I know a few years ago, um, Llewellyn Xavier um, had a sculpture park in mind, but he was going to be um, sculptures all over St. Lucia. So if it's 15 in different communities, what Jalim is proposing is a one location sculpture park. And I think Jalim had worked on one in China, or a couple of them in China. And it's very popular in China, sculpture parks. Um, so I know Jalim has a, a proposal to do one in St. Lucia. Um, and he did speak with me about it when we started talking about the underwater sculpture park. But I told him we're kind of more focused on the underwater for now. Uh, but yes, I mean, uh, on land sculpture park is also very, very exciting. And October 1st marks the start of Sure, yeah. Do you think this year will be bigger than last year? Um, I don't know if it will be bigger than last year. And, you know, we've had so much for the year. We've had so much. You know, uh, if you just, you know, just reflect on the year that we've had in St. Lucia in terms of some of the achievements from jazz, carnival, Julian, Alfred, cricket, um, and more cricket is CPL. And to ask if the Kings win the CPL, I think we will probably have to have another motorcade in St. Lucia. Um, you know, and I think we should start preparing for that, you know, if it happens this Sunday. Um, we've had emancipation, we've had La Rose. La Rose was really special this year. Um, and we're now preparing for Creole Heritage Month and of course, La Marguerite celebrations. Um, so I just have to wait. It, it, Everything just seems to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So um, I can't tell you much more than to tell you. I'm just looking forward to enjoy the month. It's probably the month when I put on the most weight, you know. <laughs> so um, I, I'm looking forward to it. And of course, in November, we have the Beach Festival. Um, itself is going to be a big activity. And England tours. Um, there'll be free matches in St. Lucia. I hope I can get leave for those three days so I can go and sit down and watch some cricket or whatnot. Um, so it's really exciting. And, and, but I, I think, though, I've had discussions with the Folk Research Centre about how we can redesign Creole Heritage Month. I mean, I can't say much about it here. Uh, but I, I really think we need to, um, you know, realign it a bit. Um, you know, uh, mix the whole of St. Lucia, the space for celebration. I don't know if you're following me, rather than it being seen as selected communities, I want the whole of St. Lucia, you know. It's already happening, you know. Almost, you know, outside of the formal structure. So when you drive from Castries, and if you drive around the island, there should be non-stop celebration. There's a continuous, you know, um, Continuous instances of celebration, each one have its own unique, you know, and thing. So, for example, as you drive through a community that's known for a particular Creole practice, that should be manifested. Not everything, 
but what is they best known for? So as you go around the island, you get a multiplicity of experiences, each one rooted in the local historical experiences of that community. Um, and I think maybe we could try that and see how it works out. Rather than having three communities or four communities, make the whole country just one national celebration. And like I say, with each community presenting what they are best known for in terms of their history, their culture. So if you're more a drumming community, as people go through that community, that celebration, they will be drumming. And if you go for another community and it is say La Magritte, there'll be La Magritte on display. If another one is fish and seafood, then it'll be fish and seafood. So, you know, we're not gonna, if one is known because of boat canoe building, they'll be showing how it used to be done in the old days. And if another one is about fishing and how they made nets and whatnot, they will be displaying that. So everybody will put on the best of that community. And, but that, that, that's just my thinking. And, uh, and uh, maybe we, it's something we could look at. Um, and change it up a bit. The other big thing I want to see for Creole heritage is fashion. You know, I, I really want to see a greater emphasis on fashion and people wearing the Creole wear, whether it is the Madras or whether it is the African, you know, expressions, whatnot. Um, because it's really about our Creoleness, that mixing of different influences and cultures. So if we can put more emphasis on on the fashion, you know, more you know, telling dress and clothing um, so I can wear more of my Creole clothing for the entire month, you know. Maybe we can start off every Friday being Creole wear and eventually over the next few years it emerging to be a major fashion statement. Um, I, I think it's something else too that we can look at. So, I mean, I have a lot of thoughts going through my head um, and I, I guess it will come into place. So you did say that Creole month is a month you gave me you know, a lot of people love the Creole food, but one of the concerns is that typically around this time people get food poisoning. Yeah, and yeah. It's one of the reasons people are very skeptical to actually go out and participate. Is there any monitoring that's going to be in place? Do, does anybody just get to go and sell food by the side of the road? What is the process? Well, that, that's always the challenge. The Environmental Health Divi um, Division is very active. I mean, it's super active. But of course, they're limited by staffing and resources and what they can do. But they do an excellent job going around. And like I said, they cannot police every instance. Um, so we, we need to think back. Before we have the enforcement, we probably need to have the education and the training so people are aware of how they should, you know, um, prepare food stuff, the extra care they need to take, and to really put a focus on training and educating people so you don't rely on enforcement to solve the problem, but rather you preempt it and not allow the problem to emerge in the first place. Um, so yes, I mean, it will be a challenge for environmental health, but they, they, they do try. And the minimum wage, it's supposed yeah. to come into effect tomorrow. tomorrow. He'll be addressing the nation tonight. So he'll be saying a lot about it. Uh, so tomorrow is effectively National, national Livable Wage Day. Uh, it's the day when 13,000 workers can start reflecting on at the end of October, they will get an increase in their salary. And a lot of them will be the better off for it. Um, so we take a lot of pride as a government, um, a lot of pride as a government for enacting um, I mean, your minimum unlivable wage. Okay, I want a from you. Are you aware of the information that um, the CID developer for the housing mm. project in mm. Hong Kong, um, that this individual is actually facing criminal charges in for Kotlin? Well, I saw it this morning. Somebody sent me something. Um, Redoc um, posted, and I think the opposition has been saying a lot about it. Um, I am trying, I mean, I've been in discussions all morning. Um, we will get as much information as we can about it. Um, I don't know whether the person was questioned. I don't know whether the person was charged. I, I don't know. Um, but one thing I can tell you, at certainly at the time when we were in discussions with the company, there were no issues relating to the individual, none at all. So I have no worries about that. Um, and we will deal with it as we get all the information. As soon as we get all the information necessary, we'll contact the company 
and find out from the company what this is about. Um, and we will move forward. Already accusations have been made about Ile, the Prime Minister, and Thaddeus Antoine. We expect the opposition. I mean, after the week we had last week, you understand the opposition will certainly be on the, on, on the hunt for anything you know about the government. But we are committed to the housing project in, Mar in Rock Hall. We believe St. Lucians need more housing and St. Lucians need more options. And at the same time, we will do whatever we can to make sure that we do not expose this country to any, um, you know, any unnecessary um, associations. And we'll find out. And like I said, we, I read the story this morning and I asked for a briefing on it. So I'm expecting by the end of the day to get a, a briefing on exactly. We did not know about this story, um, but it has surfaced this morning and we will find out. No, this thing was signed almost two years ago. So, I mean, I, certainly the ending of last year, but discussions would have started the year before. So it's been a while. But again, I will get all the information and share all the information with you. But expect the opposition to say a lot of things and accuse a lot of people. That, that, that's the style. Um, you know, for example, I, I read the opposition making comments about the gazetting of the two infrastructure projects and saying we were backdating them. Let me just explain to you. The law is very clear. The minister, after consultation of cabinet, shall approve the CIP projects to approve it. So once the minister approves the projects, after he consults cabinet, and agreements are signed, in effect, you, you have an agreement in, in place. The gazetting, the gazetting of the projects is not necessarily the approval of the project. The approval of the infrastructure option was done in December last year in terms of you can now have projects of that nature. The actual project itself, the gazetting is to inform that those projects have been approved. But the claiming it means it's illegal. But let me tell you, Galaxy was never gazetted, not up to today. Never gazetted. The Galaxy project at Canals was never gazetted. The range project which was a real estate project that they allowed to be sold as a donation project, and you can tell me whether that's legal or not, was never gazetted. So how do you look at us and say, you gazetted late and you backdating it, but they never gazetted the projects they approved. DSH Hotel Project was never gazetted. It was approved by cabinet but never gazetted. So I can you free projects they had that they never gazetted. But how do you accuse us now of saying that your project is illegal because you gazetted it um, a few weeks ago? And for us, when we did our review, we said we were doing a review and make sure we had everything in place. Um, we started our review, realized it had not been gazetted, which is a requirement, and we gazetted it. We also gazetted the members of the board because the law says they have to be gazetted, but they had not been gazetted, so we gazetted them. So the law says when you make those appointments, when you get those projects approved, you must gazet them so the public knows that. So we've been doing that to make sure we cover all our bases. So I will ask the CIP board and lawyers whether we can now gazet Galaxy and now gazet DSH and now Gazette Range, because they were never gazetted. Um, with all the allegations surrounding CIP or whatever, um, well, actually, first of the audit, has it started yet, the, the national audit? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, certainly we've approved everything for it to start. Okay. I cannot tell you if there are people in the office today, but I know it has been approved to commence. Mm. Uh, Um, I think we did, we did announce the company. Um, it is one of the international audit firms. Yeah. All right. Um, I think the ECCB, they would have just um, formed the Interim Yeah, Regulatory Commission. Mm. I guess really harmonizing all the different programs. Yeah. No, I, I'm a big supporter of the Regulatory Commission. I'm a very big supporter of it because I think we need to have a level playing field and everybody can monitor what, what is being done and make sure everyone sticks to the standards. Uh, because St. Lucia has been 
um, you know, largely following up. And since July 2021, we've reinforced all the processes at the CIP. So we want everybody to do the same. We want everybody to do the same checks we do. Otherwise, we are putting people to more checks in St. Lucia, taking longer, and others are not. So we, we support it. We believe it would be better for the industry. There is only one outstanding report, and it will be tabled at the next sitting of Parliament. Are we going to be hearing how many passports have been sold for, so far for the year? And the, the Commissioner, I, I have said it, mm -hmm. I have said it, the Prime Minister has said it, the Commission of Police has said it. Who has to say it again? Tell me and I'll ask them to say it. You will see how many... We have said it. We have. The Commissioner of Police herself said it. How many passports have been issued? I, I did an address, and I said it. And I also spoke to the Chamber of Commerce, and I, I also spoke about it. And if you want, next week, Monday, I will come again and give you all the data again. No, I'm I, not looking at that. I'm talking about No, the whole, the whole, I can give it to you. I can give you from the very first day the program started to um, the latest count. I can give it to you. It's not, it's not an issue. I mean, it's absolutely not an issue. You see, because a lot is being said and people don't approve. Applications doesn't mean approvals. You know, and an application can take more than a year before an approval can, is given. But if you want that information, I can give it to you. In fact, if I had time, I'd go in my phone and, and get it and give it to you. You know, from the very first, from the very first, the very first day. Yeah. 